is a beautiful morning, right? How many of you agree on that? Hi, Anil. Hey, good morning, Amrish. Still yawning? Hi, Sarda. Good morning. So what's the beautiful thing about today? I'm as good as the weather, Amrish. Thank you so much. Yes, tell me what's the beautiful thing about today. Let's connect with our YouTube viewers as well. So what's the beautiful thing about? Okay. Today. Okay, so weather is very pleasant today, Sharda. So where do you reside? Pleasant weather. Okay, Arun. I look more handsome. Wow, Sanavaj. <laughs> Wonderful. That's good. Uh, this is my first class. That's a beautiful day. That's wonderful to know. Anil, welcome to the session. Okay, Sarda is from Guwahati, Assam. Lovely. Lovely people with all the lovely tea gardens. Everything is appreciable. All right, Lakhan. I'm on cloud nine, right, to attend this masterclass, Nasima. That's the good way to begin the session because all of you know that today we are going to share top 10 idioms for speaking. Pleasant weather and mood is also pleasant. That's wonderful to know, Punima. Yeah, I second that. Took some self-care, okay? That's required, you need to take care, okay? I am attending your class. It's, it means a lot for me. <clears throat> Nitesh, trust me, the feeling is mutual here. How to speak fluent English language, ma'am? Yes, that's a difficult question, isn't it? So Amrish, do not worry. I know that uh, speaking English fluently is not everybody's cup of tea. <clears throat> some of us screw the test, but for some of us, it's a cakewalk, right? So stay till the end of the session, you will learn certain techniques, strategies, and the idioms that you can use in your IELTS speaking and impress your examiner right away from uh, part one, okay? Welcome, Sarda. So those who are beginners here, a warm welcome to all of you. I think um, the most beautiful thing about today is that you get the choice to make it better than yesterday, okay? So whatever we have learned yesterday, we are going to increase our learning today, okay? We are going to learn a lot of idioms today, definitely. It will boost your band scores because band seven and above in speaking suggests that you need to use some idiomatic structures, all right? Your classes are really helpful, ma'am. It's gonna help me for my exam within March 30. And I'm glad to know that, Karna. I'm glad to know that. So guys, um, please stay till the end of this lesson. I'm going to share the top 10 idioms for you. And you can use these idioms in any part of your IELTS speaking, be it part one, part two, or part three. Now, those who are beginners here, let me tell you that your IELTS module, uh, especially speaking, has got three parts, okay? And one of the band descriptors says that you have to use idiomatic language, yeah? So before we dive in, those who do not know me, let me tell you, my name is Rani and I am currently working with Leap Scholar, um, a platform, a wonderful platform where we, act along with our students, make the study dim abroad up possible for everyone, okay? So 75% of our students are able to score band seven and above by using this platform. Yeah. I have 10 plus years of experience in training both ESL and IELTS candidates. And I'm glad to tell you that I have been certified by the Cambridge University. I'm a CELTA certified trainer. And I have been in this field for quite a long time. And with all the tips and strategies, my students were able to achieve band seven and above, all right? So if you all uh, wish to learn from me, stay till the end of the lesson. You are going to learn a lot today, all right? So how many of you were present yesterday? Let me know that first. How many of you were present yesterday? Because I had given you some homework, do you remember? So these are your homework. Let's discuss them first quickly. Yes, Degandeep, I will definitely tell you that. <laughs> but let's just do this homework first, all right? 
So can you tell me uh, the error for number one? Can you identify the error here? The sceneries of Kashmir are beautiful. What is the error here? Scenery. Okay, Amitesh. Full stop at end. <laughs> okay, Mahek. Sceneries. Yes, Bhavya. Correct. That's the correct answer. Here, the sceneries. Sceneries is incorrect here. Why it is incorrect? Because, can you give me the reason? Yes, the correct answer is scenery and not sceneries. Yes, we do not use the plural format. It is an uncountable noun. Yes, Nasima, you're correct. It's an uncountable noun. So you are supposed to use the scenery of Kashmir. So are you going to use the plural verb here? Since it is your singular uncountable noun, you're not going to use a plural verb here, right? So how do you rewrite it? The scenery of Kashmir is beautiful, okay? Right? Okay, let's do the next one. The police is patrolling the area. Patrol. R, okay, yes, yes, correct, correct, Bhavya. Can you give me the reason? Okay, Vikas, yes, Ravi, correct. Police is plural. Yes, correct. So, police is a plural noun, all right? So, police is a plural noun, hence you cannot use, you cannot use is here, okay? You're supposed to use R, okay? Yes, all of you are correct. The police is patrolling the area. So police is a plural noun. Hence, you are supposed to use plural verb. Clear? So the police are patrolling the area. Okay. Right. The next one, he ordered for two cups of tea. What happened, Saran? Cup, is it cup? He ordered two cups of tea. Yes, Joshua, you're absolutely correct. Order for not use, okay, Bhavya? All right, so here the error is with preposition, the use of preposition, clear? He ordered for, so for is superfluous here. We don't require a preposition after this verb ordered, okay? So the correct answer is he ordered two cups of tea, all right? So this is superfluous, we don't require four. Next one, whenever it rains, I like to wear, uh, wear my blue coat. Yes, let's hear the answer from our YouTube viewers here. Yes, so it is not cup as I have mentioned here, you can see on the screen. Jagannathan, welcome and give me your answer, please, for number four. Jagannathan, your answer for number four. Yes, I'm reading all your messages, YouTube viewers. Okay, uh, it read it. Okay, we need a comma here. Wonderful. After which word? Yes, correct. Comma should be there. Great. So whenever it rains, it is your a dependent clause, okay? Whenever it rains is a dependent clause. So after rains, you need to put a comma, right? Why? Because this is a dependent clause. Remember yesterday I had told you, when you start your sentence with a dependent clause, you will have to place a punctuation that is your comma before the main clause, okay? So the correction here is when, whenever it rains, okay? Put a comma. And then you can start the main clause. I like to, okay? Fine. Number fifth, all of my sisters are doctors, whereas I am a doctor. What is the mistake here? Yes, 
Yes. So there are two errors. Can you spot them? Two errors here. All of my sisters are doctors, whereas I am a doctor. So the subject should be different here because you are presenting two contrasting ideas, right? A contrasting view is here, right? So either you change here doctors in the first uh, clause or in the second one, right? So all of my sisters are doctors, whereas comma, is that correct? Are you supposed to put comma after the uh, subordinating conjunction whereas? That's incorrect, okay? How would you write it? So you can follow this structure. All of my sisters are doctors. Then you need to put a comma, okay? Why we are putting comma after main clause here? This is an exceptional case. Usually we put comma after the dependent clause, but here we place a comma after the main clause because we are going to present a contradictory statement, okay? So all of my sisters are doctors, whereas I am a teacher, all right? So this is the correct sentence. Fine, give me the answer for the next one. The teacher asks that why I was late. What is the error in number six? Error in number six? Yes. Asked why, okay. Should, okay, Mansi, comma is required, no. Remove that, yes, that's correct. Niharika, correct. Yes, Nisha, good. Definitely. So the incorrect word here is that. You are not supposed to use that every time with a verb. Okay. So here teacher asked. Asked is a verb, right? We do not use the pronoun that after asked every time, right? So it's not required. Superfluous here. You shouldn't use it. Okay. So we already have a conjunction, which is why here it is performing the role of a conjunction joining the sentence. The teacher asked why I was late. So two conjunction will make the sentence um, incorrect. So the correct answer is the teacher asked why I was late. Okay, fine. Number seven, it has been snowing from Monday. Okay, since in place of from. Yes, Sarda, correct? No, Nasima, it's not had been. Okay, it has been snowing from Monday. So the error here is from. Okay, so in place of from, we are going to write since. Why since? Why since? Because when we are referring back to a point in time, we use since and not from, okay? So the correct answer is, it has been snowing since, okay? Since Monday, right? So we are referring to a time clause back in the past, okay? A point in time, fine? Now, last one, number eight, the cattle is grazing in the field. Cattle is grazing in the field. Yes, Badal, you're correct. Okay. Now tell me cattle is a singular pronoun, sorry, singular noun or a plural noun. Is it countable, uncountable? You have to tell me that as well. It's a plural noun, okay. Uncountable, correct. So are we supposed to use is? Since cattle is a plural noun, it's uncountable plural noun, we cannot count it. So we are, we are not going to use is here. It's a plural noun. So with the plural noun, we need a plural verb, okay? So is here is incorrect. Just a second. Right? So is here is incorrect. So in place of is, we are going to use are. Okay, so the cattle are grazing, okay? This is the correct one. But if you want to suggest a singular cattle, how would you write? Any idea? If you want to suggest a singular thing, how would you write? The cow is no. 
Do not worry, Saran. When you come to the class, you will get grammar classes here. Okay. Right. All right. So if you want to suggest the the singular thing, the singular uh, cattle, you have to write the herd of cattle. Okay. The herd of cattle. Now it is your singular noun. So here you can use is. The herd of cattle is grazing. Okay. In the field. Correct. Did you understand that? Now share your scores here out of eight. Your scores, please. Yes, Sherry, correct. You are Badal. Yes, Jammu. Five. Okay, Deep, Amite, seven. Yes, our YouTube viewers, please share your scores here. Ruchita, five. Okay. Punnima, seven. Hina. Karna, wonderful. All right. So those who have got four or five, I hope this time, I mean, next time when you use these sentences, you're not going to make mistakes, okay? Muhammad, wonderful. Ashdeep, you can practice these questions when you come to the class. Definitely we'll have grammar sessions for you all and you will learn more, right? Okay, so let's clear this and move on to the next slide. So which is the topic of the day? Idioms, right? Now, what do you mean by idiom? What do you mean by an idiom? Why do we need to use idioms? Yes. Connectors, no, the Smith. As a metaphor, well, Amitesh, let's see. Instead of using long sentence, all right? Okay, Bhavya, that's wonderful. Figurative language, yes. As you can see on the screen, literal meaning, figurative meaning. That means idiom is an expression which has a figurative form of meaning. It doesn't give us literal meaning. For example, it's raining cats and dogs, okay? If we look at the individual words, the separate words, we have different meaning. Cats, uh, dogs, they are noun, right? They're animals. But if we combine these words together, they give us a figurative meaning. Okay, if I say it's raining cats and dogs, the literal meaning is the cats and dogs are falling from the sky, right? So which you can see here, okay? So this is the literal meaning. You can see these dogs and cats are falling from the sky. This is the literal meaning. But idioms give us the figurative meaning. That means raining heavily, it's pouring. It's raining cats and dogs means it's raining heavily, it's pouring, clear? So idioms, they enhances our language, right? Um, we are able to communicate a precise and clear message to our reader. We can, uh, sorry, our listener. We are going to impress our examiner if we use maybe one or two idiomatic structures in any part of our IELTS speaking, all right? So today we are going to learn a few idioms. Let's get started. Number one idiom here is to sit on the fence, okay? to sit on the fence. It's a beautiful idiom. <clears throat> the meaning of this idiom is to delay or avoid making a decision when you have to choose between two sides, okay? So you are confused. Maybe there is a dispute going on between two people and you don't know which side to take on, right? Sometimes your siblings are fighting, right? Or maybe your friends are arguing and you want to take a side, but you're not able to because you don't want to dishearten anyone, right? So when two ladies argue, it is best to sit on the fence and not make either of them angry, right? How many of you agree on that? Did you happen to sit on a fence sometime? Yes? So that's raining heavily. Yes, Muskan. Yes, Akila, right? Okay. Most of the time? <laughs> Definitely. Yeah, that's happened and that's a good decision if you sit on the fence. When two ladies argue, it is best to sit on the fence, right? Now in the exam, especially in your IELTS section part, um, section uh, three, the examiner might ask you, uh, what do you think about, um, let's say two topics are there, money and a job, okay? So which one is better for you, having a good job or money, right? So there you can use this idiom to sit on the fence. Well, at the moment um, I, I am on the fence. I think both are equally important. 
uh, money certainly plays a, a good role in our life. We have to uh, bear our daily expenses. So we need money. However, um, having a good job will help us to socialize with our um, colleagues, with our friends, right? So I, I guess uh, at the moment I'm on the fence, I can't decide, but I think um, both are equally important, right? So maybe you are not sure about the answer. You can use this. You are not able to take side, right? To sit on the fence. I'm in two minds, right? So you can use that idiom as well. So right now I'm in two minds. So when you have to present your opinion, use to sit on the fence, you are confused. You are not able to decide on any uh, point or you're not able to um, favor anyone. Then you can use to sit on the fence. All right. Okay, so let's move on to the next one. Under the weather. What is the meaning of this idiom? Under the weather. All right, Saran, in Tamil we say this cat on the wall. All right, wonderful, Saran. Sick, okay, Jasmeet, not well. Feeling sick, yes. Selfish, no, Nisha. Yes, our YouTube viewers, let me know the meaning of under the weather. Not feeling well, definitely. When you are not feeling well, you are sick, you use this idiom, under the weather, okay? These days, weather is changing. So you can say, I'm feeling a bit under the weather, right? I'm not well, uh, I think I'm having a cold. I'm under the weather, right? Can you make one sentence here? Yes. Gopal, correct. Can you make a sentence here? I am on off as I am under the weather today. Yeah, that's correct, Bhavya. I can't make it because I was under the weather. Yes, correct. People are becoming sick. It's under the weather for everyone. Mm -hmm. Okay, Jasmeet, correct. I cannot come to college because I'm under the weather. Okay, Naludi. All right. So you all know the meaning of this, right? So let's move on to the next one. The bees needs. The bees needs, my favorite. So how do you pronounce it? You have to use the long vowel. Bees needs, okay? The long vowel sound. You have to stretch it, okay? You stretch your lips. The bees needs. Right? The meaning is to be excellent or of an extremely high standard. Right, So in IELTS speaking, uh, especially in part one, you will get questions like, do you like your job? Do you like uh, eating food? Or tell us something about your hobbies. Right, What is your favorite thing? Or any, anything related to your favorite. Right, So these questions are quite common in part one and you can easily use this idiom, the bees knees. For example, I love Chicago pizza. It's the bee's knees, okay? I love vanilla ice cream. It's the bee's knees, right? The other day, my father gifted me an expensive uh, car, maybe an Audi. Uh, it's the bee's knees. I'm loving it. It's the bee's knees, right? Traveling is my bee's knees, okay, Uday? I never miss working hour. It's bee's knees for me. Is that correct? I never miss working hour. Uh, so, Vinay, the meaning here is that you're talking about some um, object or maybe some certain things which has got excellent quality, okay? So, it should be related to be maybe an item, right? Maybe an eatable, clear? Okay, Karne, you can say that, yes. Even for colors, yes, you can use for colors as well. I like to play golf on weekends. It's the bees knees for me. Correct, Bhavya? I like to dance. It's bees knees. Okay, so this, this idiom you can fit in any question in part one. Okay? If you are talking about your uh, favorite clothes, uh, you hang out with friends, you go for shopping, you eat your favorite food, the bees knees. Right? I love Chicago pizza. It's the bees knees. Yeah. Fine. Now this brings us to another idiom, walk on air. So do you walk on air? Are you walking on air right now? Yes, Kuntupali. How many of us are walking on air right now? Yes, Mansi, that's correct. Okay, Ashtip.
fine so it means to feel extremely excited or happy okay so whenever you are extremely excited you are happy you can use this the most common one um, uh, common idioms for expressing your happiness are on cloud nine right i'm on seventh heaven so these are quite common so try using an uncommon idiom as well so you can use walk on air so i'm so happy in my new job that i feel like walking on air right so how's your new job do you study do you work right as soon as you say i work the next question might be okay so how do you find your job do you like your job yes definitely i'm so happy in my new job either i feel like walking on air because i have a great atmosphere here the colleagues are quite friendly the working culture is wonderful here right yes tamanna when i crack okay definitely i want all of you to crack your eyes and be on air yes jamana you can use that okay you can start with the connectors and then you can use your idiom okay well i feel walking on the air okay I'm so excited to be here for this master class that I feel I'm walking on air. Thank you, Karna. After hearing the news of Bay Isles, so I'm okay. So you have to rephrase this a grammatical mistake, Risha. Otherwise, uh, the um, the thought is good here. Yes. I think I'll walk on air if I could score a band nine. That you can rephrase. Okay. All right. Good. So again, in any parts of your uh, top, you know, I'll speaking topic, you can use walk on air. Let's say the examiner asks you, "Do you hang out with friends? What do you do on your weekends?" Right? I love to go uh, for long trips. I'm always happy, ecstatic, and I'm I'm uh, I walk on air when I'm with my friends. Let's say, clear. Yeah? All right. So just guess this idiom. Can you guess this idiom? Yes, Vikram, you are correct. No, I do. It's fine. You can you can comment here. Why don't you answer this one? Your name is here, Edu Astro Official, right? So, can you can you uh, guess this idiom? Yes, some of our students have already done that. Looking dull, getting tired, Monday blues. <laughs> yes, yes. Okay, does it look like Mona Lisa? Ude, down in the mouth, feeling bad, moody, a long face, feeling awful. Okay, a lot of idioms are coming up here again. Yes, so it means feeling blue. Okay, feeling blue is the idiom here. Feeling blue means. you are sad so when you are sad you are depressed you can use this idiom feeling blue right maybe you regret a decision in your life so examiner might ask you tell us uh, about a decision that you regret okay so you can talk about a, a decision that uh, you regret now and you feel uh, blue about that situation so you can use this idiom over there all right so guys if you want to practice more with us you can definitely download the ielts speaking app and continue to start practicing speaking you all can uh, bring out all um, ideas fun and loving engagements uh, with your friends here in the speaking room okay so those who are um, android users download this app and practice start practice english here okay you can you can improve your english just you have to download this app install your ielts prep app how to join enter the ielts prep app by lips caller you can click on this button which is your speech button and you can join speaking rooms you can practice with your partners around india and you can join here any time any time of the day whenever you have time you can come and practice there are some speaking rooms if you find the speaking rooms are live at uh, the moment you joined you can join any of those or you can also host a session here okay so you can practice any topic here you can improve your uh, skill buildings here how many of you have already downloaded this app yes yes that's correct this me 
yes so our moderators they always come to the speaking rooms with different and uh, fun loving um, topics they try to engage you so that you can practice more those who are shy and hesitant and you feel that you need to speak with someone a stranger maybe where you don't feel shy this is platform you can utilize okay so most of our students they are also attending the sessions through this app right i have already taken one year of subscription okay lakhan that's good to know so you will have to install it from the play store naluri okay you all have to install it from the play store so if you are an android user you can definitely install it all right so tap on this link and you can install the app right yes you can join the speaking rooms also we have this master class challenge i think the other day i mentioned you about this master class challenge you will have to attend four classes in a week and you are going to unlock a certificate which is specially curated by our lips scholar okay so those who want to have this certificate you will have to join this you have to fulfill this challenge okay you can also unlock fast track which is worth rupees 299 but here you don't have to pay a penny it's absolutely free uh, if you are able to join four classes regularly uh, in a week you are going to get this course and here we have the recorded lectures right those who are beginners here you can avail this fast track course uh, these are the recorded lectures by our experts and you can watch them any time you want okay because you are preparing this is your first step towards ielts preparation if you want to fulfill your study abroad dream with leap scholar you will have to first of all download the app install your app secondly always come to this master class attend these classes on a daily basis because every day we have um, something important for you right and the first step towards uh, fulfilling your dream your dream to maybe um, settling down in an english speaking country or maybe for higher studies you can start your preparation right away attending these master classes all right so there are quite a few benefits of this classes as you must be knowing that since last two days i have conducting the sessions you have learned about writing you have learned about um, error detections in grammar also we are conducting a spe speaking session today especially on idioms so you can see module wise all the tips we are uh, bringing here on the table for the beginners okay so why don't you come here every day learn the basics of ielts we also share all the strategies for the beginners so once you learn all the strategies here then you can join our courses okay it would be easier for you so those who are beginners they don't know anything about ielts this is the right platform for you fine now make the best use of it all right so that's good to know ruchi she has received fast track recording for free all right ruchi so those who are new here if you also want to receive fast track recording for free like ruchi like ruchi did so you all have to download the app you will have to come to the class regularly so that you can also unlock the certificate as well as the fast track course uh, muskan you can come and join any master class okay yes so every day we are conducting four to five master classes so you can join any of these okay okay all right fine now can anyone tell me about this idiom what is it are you confused to see this yes the name of the app is vikram ielts prep app by leap scholar okay ielts prep app by leap scholar right here yes vikram you can note down ielts prep app by leap scholar okay you have to install it edu astro okay if you are an android user go to play store you will find it over there you download it okay yes vikram that's available on play store all right fine now please let me know about this idiom
scared of own shadow. All right. Thank you, Pintu. That's good to know. How to unlock by attending four master class? You will have to, if you're a beginner of Sana, you will have to sign in. Okay, go to our website. You will have to sign in. You can just tap on this link. Okay, it will be the certificate would be sent on your mail. Clear? You just keep on attending. Evil eye. All right. So if you are confused, you are not able to decide something, then you can use this idiom. That means you cannot make out of something, right? So what is this idiom? Can't make head nor tail of it. Okay, this is the idiom. Can't make head nor tail of it. So this is the idiom for uh, this picture. It means that you are confused, okay? For example, in your IELTS speaking, you might come across a question where the examiner might ask you about uh, the modern art, okay? Maybe a museum, maybe a confusing topic which you do not have any idea. You don't know what to say about, right? Um, nothing, nothing gets around your head. So you can use this idiom, can't make head or tail of it. Maybe uh, tell us something about the modern art. What do you know about the modern art? Well, honestly, I can't make head or tail out of it. It's really confusing for me. I have no idea about modern art, right? So you can use this idiom, can't make head nor tail of it. Now make one sentence here. Uh, Jyotika, writing classes, um, you will uh, get all the information from the website. Okay, you can view, visit our website, you will get the information regarding all the upcoming master classes. Okay, Jyotika? Yes. Now make a sentence, can't make head nor tail. Can anyone make a sentence? Let me give you a question, okay? What do you think about the museum in your country? I can't make head or not tail during speaking task. Okay, that's good. But I hope after this session you can, Nasima. I can't make head nor tail in my English grammar. For that, Martha, you will have to join our IELTS prep app. Okay. The class was so difficult that I couldn't make head or tail of it. So Niharika, mm, that's correct, but do not use that I couldn't. Okay. Okay. So be specific, Mansi. Okay. All right. Good. I can't make head nor tail while speaking about museums. Of museums, yes, Purima, check that. When it makes to, when it comes to shopping, we use that verb. When it comes to shopping, I can't make head nor tail between two dresses. Okay, correct. Yes, correct. All of you. All right, so let's clear this one. You can use this idiom whenever you get a confused topic and you have no idea about that topic, all right? So this will also give you some time to tackle the question, okay? Initially, you can buy some time for yourself, okay? Well, honestly, um, I'm confused about this topic. I can't make head or tail out of it. So you, it, you will buy some time for yourself and gradually maybe you can start speaking, okay? So I think museums are um, quite popular in our country. However, I am not into museum. Uh, this is not my cup of tea, uh, but I think uh, museums are famous for the artifacts, the portraits, or maybe the medieval coins. Huh? Something you can make your story here, right? Okay, so this brings us to the next idiom, fit as a fiddle. Fit as a fiddle means someone who is healthy. Again, in your speaking eyes, you get this topic. Describe an energetic person, right? Describe up, uh, um, describe someone whom uh, someone you admire okay someone you admire an energetic person use this idiom fit as a fiddle okay maybe you admire your mother I, I definitely admire my mother she is as fit as fiddle she wakes up at a crack of a dawn that means early morning right and she does all the household chores moreover she is loving caring looks after the family um, she is quite energetic right so fit as a fiddle someone who is healthy right also you can use some other vocabulary related to fit as a uh, fiddle these are in fine fettle 
in the pink, robust, healthy, fit, blooming, strong, hearty, flourishing, vigorous. Okay, these are some of the vocabulary you can also add in your talk. Okay. Morning word. Beautiful morning, Ranjana. Um, I don't remember what you want to say. Maybe after the class, you can leave a comment because the class it is also recorded, right? Even though my grandmother is 75, she is as fit as a fiddle. Okay, she is fit as fiddle. Um, yes, you can use that, but then uh, it's better to use one supporting line. Can I? Crack of a dawn. I will write here. Okay. Crack of a dawn. That means someone who wakes up early. Right. Crack of a dawn. So even you can use this idiom. My mother wakes up at the crack of a dawn. Uh, she is quite energetic because she looks after the household. Um, she looks after the family. She does all the household chores and she is as fit as a fiddle. Okay. Early risers. Okay. So crack of a dawn means early risers. Clear? You can also say early bird, early risers. One who wakes up early in the morning is crack of a dawn. Okay, Mansi? Fit as a fiddle means. Healthy, someone who is healthy and strong, energetic. Yes? Yes, early bird, night owl. That's a contrasting one. Yes, Sumesh, correct. All right. Let's move on to the next one. So take note of all these idioms. This will definitely help you. A whale of a time. A whale of a time means to have, to enjoy yourself, okay? I mean, the excitement or the enjoyment, the fun is the size of a whale. That means you enjoyed a lot, a great deal of enjoyment. So you refer to this idiom, a whale of a time. Maybe you went to attend a wedding or maybe you went uh, for a biking, maybe uh, for a trip, excursion, right? So you enjoy so much that you use this idiom, I had a whale of a time. Okay, I had I had a well of a time attending my um, friend's wedding. Yeah. So, you know, I'll speaking again. The examiner asked you in the topic, in part two especially, how do you feel about it? Maybe about a book. How do you feel about it? An experience. How do you feel about it? An expensive gift you received. How do you feel about it? So, just go and use it. A well of a time. Maybe uh, you went to a trip with your friends. You had a wonderful time. You had a gala time. I had a well of a time with my friends and relatives visiting Goa. Okay. So what do you do on weekend? Well, on weekend, I love to play online games. And most of the time, I hang out with my friends and we have a well of a time. Okay. So enjoying very much. Yes, to, for some of us, reading gives us a well of a time. Yes, just me, correct. Last night I was out with my friends and we had a well of a time. Yes, Vinay, that's correct. Okay. And when I'm with my friends, I'm a, okay, I have, okay. I have a well of a time. Bhavna, Bhavya, do not say I am, I have. Again, people say I am crack as down, that's not correct. Okay. Right, so well of a time you can use for part one, part two, and part three as well. Now, next idiom is kith and kin. What is the meaning of kith and kin? You can see this picture and tell me. What is the meaning of kith and kin? Relations, friends and family, right? Boss and employee, Bhavya says. Yes, that could be. Of near and dear ones, yes. Correct. So kit and kin means spending time with maybe friends. The meaning is friends and relatives. Okay. Blood relations. Fine. Now you can say that. Um, again, you can use this idiom for part one and part two. Um, so 
what do you do on weekends okay since i am you can say since i am a social butterfly since i am a social butterfly again you can see this is your you are starting with a conjunction okay that means a dependent clause since i am a social butterfly i love to spend quality time with my friends and sorry with my we have to use idiom kit and kin okay since i am a social butterfly i love to spend quality time with my kit and kin can you make one sentence here i usually spend most of my free time with my kit and kin absolutely correct punima close eight yes arun you you've got the meaning correct so again you can use this idiom in part 1 okay when you hang out with your friends or your relatives you go to celebrate some occasion maybe uh, birthdays right so you can use it kith and kin let's clear this one all right so this brings us to the end of this idiom idiom number 10 guess this idiom yes joshua you are absolutely correct here yes sonam to rajanala prakash all of you are correct here you got it nisha that's good my mother is as fit as the fiddle because she is doing regular morning walk and exercise that's correct nisha uh, what is the issue manjit you can write in the chat later on okay so in so in is not correct vikram you can say i during weekends okay i often go out with my kitan kin at parks okay there is the incorrect preposition during you can use during out of the box correct so remember guys you will definitely uh, come across an important topic and very common topic describe a creative person describe a creative person you know so in part 2 a creative person you know you can use this idiom thinking outside the box so i know my father right he is a creative person because he thinks outside the box he is an innovator you can use this um, vocabulary creative he is an innovator he is not only open minded but also engaged and active right he is focused and he is different because his ideas are different okay someone who is imaginative clear yeah? someone who thinks outside the box something new right so you can use this idiom for that if you are going to explain about a creative person or maybe someone whom you admire you can add this quality about the person right anybody would like to speak on this topic yes anybody wants to speak on a topic describe a creative person you know yes describe a creative person you know yes nasima unmute yourself nasima can you unmute yourself no sonam can you unmute okay ma'am yes nasim Yes. Can, you, can you speak a few lines on uh, the topic? Describe a creative person, or maybe uh, a person you admire. Sorry, ma'am. No. Your voice is not clear. Can you hear me now? Your voice is not coming clear. Am I audible, guys? Okay, no problem. You can mute yourself, Nasim. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. So Karna can hear me. Divya, can you hear me? Okay. Yes. Yeah, so I am audible. All right. Thank you so much. 
Okay, Naluri says your voice is very clear, ma'am. So I think Nasim has got some internet issue. Anyway, so use this idiom. This is our 10th idiom. And I have a small game for you, small activity. Let's do it before we wind up the session. Okay, so who would like to guess the idiom here? Crystal clear? Yes, just me. Thank you. All right. Guess the idiom here. Number one. Who want to guess this one? Ajita, can you unmute yourself? Afsana, Arun, Afsana. Saran? No, actually, I, was, I thought of not talking about the topic outside the box. That's why I raised my hand. Okay. Still, I have to think, think on these terms anyway. Okay, Is no problem. Arun, Arun, you can guess it. Can you guess this ima emoji here? What is this emoji? Number one, can you guess? Don't speak evil. Don't speak in evil. Okay, don't speak evil. Okay, wonderful. Uh, okay, others, let me know in the chat. Speak of the devil. Yes, Ranjana, correct. Speak of the devil. You can see this emoji. A uh, person is speaking and is devil, right? Speak of the devil. So when do we use speak of the devil? Ashish, can you give me an example? Like, ma'am, uh, speak of a devil, and uh, we are talking about uh, some person, and he just appears. When we can say, speak of a devil, and here she is. Yes. So, when we are talking about someone, and the person immediately arrives, we say, speak of the devil, and the devil arrives, right? So, we are referring to someone, and we are uh, speaking about somebody at the moment, and the person arrives, right? Next one. <clears throat> Who wants to um, guess Priya? Yes, Priya. Yes. What is number um, number second? You all can guess. All right, Vikram. Vikram says okay. All right. Next one, next one. Ajita, can you guess? Yes, Raji, you are correct. Sonam, Hello. yes. Yes, Ajita, can you hear me? Hello, ma'am. Hi, Afsana. Hello, ma'am. Uh, number Afsana. second, can you guess number second? Then the picture show as a nose, right? Yes. Actually, ma'am, uh, I only know uh, the picture show as a red. Uh, it is uh, the idiom show will be mousetrap. Okay, so nose is used for what sense? Uh, Why do you use your nose? For which, which sense we are using? Smelling right at Smelling smell. right like Yeah? Yes. Yeah. Nose is used to smell and red. Smell, smell, a, smell a rat. Smell yes, a rat. smell a rat. Smell a rat. What do you mean by smell a rat? Smell a rat means suspicious. Okay, if something is suspicious, you suspect... Uh, Suspect, let's say, trickery or maybe uh, deception, right? Then you use this idiom. I can smell something. We say in Hindi, dal mein kuch kala hai, right? So in English, we can say, smell a red. I can smell a red. He often uh, goes to school on time, but he is never present in the class as I came to know from the teacher. I think I can smell a red, right? So you can suspect something suspicious. Okay, the last one. Who is going to guess the last one? Raise your hand. Hina, would you like to guess? The last one. Don't make fire on fuel. Okay. Anything else? Just guess one by one. What is this? Fire? Yes, correct, Patel. Burning a midnight oil? Yes, that's correct. This is your fire, midnight oil in a barrel, maybe a drum, right? So, burning a midnight oil. What is the meaning of this? Doing a task late in the night. Okay. And extending, extending or... That means you are studying late night. Okay? Yeah. You're studying late night. 
and we use uh, this idiom for that burning a midnight oil maybe you are studying late night you're working hard because you have to clear maybe your aisles so do not burn the midnight oil just use the lip scholar platform all of you should come here and you don't have to burn the midnight oil start your preparation with lip scholar <laughs> yeah uh, does it mean can you hear me yes yes i can uh, does it mean also uh, not to do anything at the 11th hour is the other way of saying it or uh, no we generally use it uh, when we uh, usually uh, wake up uh, wake up for late nights and we maybe uh, trying to finish a project or maybe we are studying something we are trying to um, preparing some uh, seminars or topics right anything that you that makes you awake late night okay okay yeah so burning a midnight oil here working till late hours all right so that's the end of this session how many of you have enjoyed the session today let me know in the chat yes adya this can be used for anything for working hard especially late nights okay yes late at night all right so this is the end of the session guys if you have enjoyed the session you learned something today so you need to all leave your comments uh, subscribe to our channel because you don't want to miss out info important informations we bring every day new lessons for you right please subscribe to our channel give your valuable feedback even we need to be encouraged right if you want to motivate us please give your feedback let us know what kind of topic you want us to bring um, in the upcoming sessions so that we are well prepared enough for you and you get benefited by the sessions here the master class okay it is a very productive session may i know if you have any other sessions for writing and reading um sri you can definitely visit our website uh, we definitely bring writing reading all the modules right all the educators here are they are expert enough uh, they have vast amount of experience so you can attend the sessions here every day we have um, um sessions on all these modules okay yes <clears throat> that's good to know rishab so download the app guys if you want to practice more with us our um, moderators who are certified they are here they conduct the sessions for you speaking rooms are there you can join any speaking room you can also host a session and start practicing right this is your first step towards fulfilling your study abroad dream right so this master classes i think it's going to be um, beneficial for you if it has today then definitely it will be in the future as well so you can unlock the certificate you can unlock the fast track course it was a great time for me because now i can use 10 more idioms in my speaking so that's great to know vikram i'm attending your class first time it's amazing thank you ma'am namrata thank feeling you feeling is feeling is mutual okay feeling is mutual i'm glad that you all participated here you are a wonderful people here a lot of participation even the youtube viewers i can see still they all are participating so that's very good to know keep subscribing to our channel keep attending the master classes these are absolutely free for you so monday i am going to uh, start a new batch in the evening 8:30 okay if you wish you can join the batch it's absolutely free visit our website leapscholar.com those who are beginners sign in you will receive an otp register your number uh, and you can view all the courses the batches they are absolutely free for you right so what else you need right now the homework here is sonam you all should um, use these idioms in your next speaking room okay i want all of you to download this app i'll prep app by leap scholar all of you download this app okay and you are going to use all these idioms in your next speaking room this is your homework okay you all should use these idioms that is your homework today itself all of you install this app and start using these idioms okay all right so on that note thank you so much wish all of you have a great day today bye bye take care everyone thank you ma'am thank you so much welcome welcome ajita thank you ma'am thank you